Do you wonder why we have to go through this TCP IP model in beginning of any networking introduction course like CCNA? That is exactly what we are going to discuss in this video and plus we are going to discuss what's the difference between TCP IP model and OSI model and where they fit into networking. Hi, my name is Sudhanshu. I'm a CCI certified and I train here people at iMedita for networking into routing switching and VoIP. So what is OSI model and what is TCP IP model and why is it so important for a beginner to learn and understand its working. Okay. Broadly when you see TCP IP and OSI, the, fundal, uh, the fundamental thing here is that OSI model is a reference model and TCP IP model is an implemented model. When you talk about a reference model, it's, it's like a general framework, it's not what is actually being used on the internet. You when you use your, uh, any social media application or when you do YouTube, when you do all that, you use TCP IP model, okay? And it follows that framework and it utilizes that. It's the actual implementation which makes you access things on the internet, okay? So when you send traffic from a source to a destination, basically you cannot send the bits continuously, okay? Think of it like this, suppose, I have to send you a big pile of pages and maybe you know you are trying to make a book out of that okay if I send you all that pages right away okay just continuously uh, the problem is if that thing is lost I have to send that complete you know pile of pages again right what we could do is we could somewhere first thing do segmentation in this you know instead of sending them all at once we might divide them into certain parts so that we uh, send a small part of that pages instead of you know all the pages at once so that is what we call segmentation okay and which is done in transport layer of TCP IP model okay so what you do is basically when you do a segmentation think and let's continue with the same example if I don't put a page number on these pages, there is no way that you will know what to keep first and what to keep next. So basically again, we do kind of a, put a sequence number at the transport layer so that the data can be rearranged. Okay. Now, you know, this is the data. Okay. Or you can say the data is the pile of pages and this one small part is a segment. Okay. We take this segment and we put that into a courier envelope okay and when we want to courier that we'll need to put a source address a destination address so that is what you do at layer 3 or you know the internet layer of TCP IP model it provides an IP address a source IP address and destination IP address based on which traffic goes from source to destination whenever in mid there is a router it does a lookup for destination IP address, finds appropriate uh, next router or the destination and then sends it forward. Okay, so that is the internet layer. Okay, next uh, there is data link layer, and in that basically think of it like okay, now we don't want any kind of alteration midway. Okay, sometimes when you know now this is where my this pile of pages analogy kind of fails, like. If you want to send now data, okay, you don't want any electromagnetic interference to alter the bits because if the bits get altered, the data gets altered and you might send something and the receiving party receives something else. So in order to keep a check on that, what we do is as a sender, when they send data, they calculate a checksum. They use an algorithm CRC to calculate a checksum value. This value is called FCS. This FCS value is then put in the trailer of the frame. Okay, So basically you take that packet, the courier and you add certain value. Okay, Now this checksum value, what does it really do? If midway during transmission, even if one bit is changed, this checksum value will not 
come out same when you feed all this in the same algorithm so you send the frame so sender sends it and when the receiver receives it it also does recalculation it do also does the same calculation using the same algorithm the checksum value that it found and the checksum value that came already you know uh, printed or i should say you know already into the frame it uh, kind of matches those two if both of them are same that means in midway there was no alteration in the frame so our data is further good to process so that's why receiver then process it further and i hope you get like you know this is how in an organized structure data moves in the network okay when you talk about osi model since it's a reference model some of uh, the layers like an application layer in tcp ip model it's further divided into application presentation session layers in osi model and it defines even further uh, things related to uh, encryption in the presentation layer and you know uh, building and keeping the sessions active at the session layer so i hope you got at least the basic idea of what an osi model and tcp ip model is of course you know it uh, takes well around 1 to 2 hours of training time here to explain all this i'm just trying to push everything this into a very small time so i hope this has been informative thank you